All right, let's do another video, y'alls. So I got my uh, Da Vinci horn back. <laughs> this is, a, I'm not gonna talk about, this isn't what the video is about, but <clears throat> I snapped this thing clean off. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're a ruffian like me and you just, you know, get a little bit, it was crooked, right? So I went in there and I'm like, oh, let me just bend it, pop, snapped it right off. So I'm fortunate that I have uh, some really good, shops nearby so i just brought this thing in and the guy uh my guy brass monkey music soldered it back on so very cool that was a fun visit too because i, I got to meet uh another gentleman that plays uh bass clarinet named don um older gentleman older than i am <clears throat> but really cool you know it was kind of a nice experience and it was funny to see the difference in um uh, like i'm kind of a I, I mean i'm very outgoing right you probably get that from these videos but at the same time when i get into public and I don't know people, I'm kind of shockingly quiet, right, at first. But so my point is, you know, we, we were kind of just chit-chatting as he was getting his clarinet fixed and I was waiting to have this dropped off. I actually thought I was just dropping it off and, and you know, Dan fixed it for me right on the spot, which was awesome. But, you know, while we were waiting for his clarinet to be fixed, we just, you know, were standing there. So he, he started talking to me and we, back and forth and, you know, like, I don't know, three or four sentences in, he stopped the conversation, reached out, introduced himself, and shook my hand. So, man, we have lost so much in society. That was so refreshing and so nice. So what a great experience. Um, you know, and again, like I said, I, I'm a remote engineer. I work right here. This is like my life is in this room. So, you know, very just, I guess, disconnected from, from people in person. But at the same time, um, it was really refreshing because, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm 50. I, I remember this when I was, you know, before the Internet and all that stuff took over. Right? None of that was here. So you had to go meet people and talk. And, and you know, that, that was how it was. But anyway, I thought that was a really cool interaction, um, you know, getting my horn fixed. But, you know, I really, man, I, I know I said this the other day, but I love this thing. So anyway, anybody out there, you know, you youngsters, any any younger kids or anybody that follow me, I can remember like some catastrophes when I was a kid in band. And, you know, this one guy, his name was Kiprian Harashimovitz. And he was a great trumpet player, but he was a couple years younger than me. And I remember he got a box Stradivarius, uh, one of the two-tone models. So it was part lacquer, part uh, nickel plated, kind of exactly like this, only it was, you know, shiny, right? So it had the, the, the lacquer on it. But uh, he was sitting on, I, I can't really show you how to do this, but he was like, we were sitting in these shitty plastic chairs that you have in high school band, right? And he was just sitting with the, the bell between his legs on the chair and he pressed down on the bell and it just mangled the whole thing. And, you know, we all laughed because we were assholes, but, you know, he starts crying. It was terrible. And I felt so bad for the dude, like, later on in life. At the time, I was just, you know, I guess I was a bully or a jerk or whatever, and I, I was laughing, but I feel bad about this, Kip. Sorry about that, man. But in any, what I was trying to explain here is that all that stuff can get, can get fixed. There's so many videos out there from like Jay Landers Brass and, and Anna Brass and some of these other things I follow that are um, that show you how they do that. And you man, you can take something that nearly had been run over by a car and, and just turn it back into a, a, a nice playing instrument. So anyway, he got it fixed. I think he had a little bit of a scar on it, which, you know, that's, that's kind of cool now. It's funny how when you're a kid, you think, oh, everything's got to remain pristine. And, you know, if you get a scratch or a ding or something, that's the end of the world. That's actually a sign of, you know, use and that you're really putting the time and the effort in. You know, I didn't realize that until I got into guitars later in my life where like the beat to shit guitars that are, go out on tour with these, you know, rock stars are the most sought after guitars ever. Not only just because they played them, but like what they look like, that's a really appealing thing for a lot of people. So, you know, having your horn look kind of crusty and got some bumps and marks on it shows that you've actually, you know, put the time in and you play it. Anyway, wow, four minutes of nonsense here, sorry. What I wanted to talk about today was uh, a follow-up to the video I did the other day on, you know, and I, I make a correction here. That was a Berkeley Winds flugelhorn. That was not a Carol Brass, so I don't know where I got that. Carol Brass horns are not cheap at all, um, quality or price. Um, and I'm not saying that Berkeley Wind is, is a poorly made instrument. I think it plays awesome. It's kind of unique. And it's my only thing that could be like a marching band type instrument. But, uh, you know, it was 300 bucks. It was really cheap. It was literally cheap. Um, anyway, so, but in watching that video, I noticed that 
There was an airy quality to the tone, the tonality of when I was playing that through the, uh, the Lotus mouthpiece. And what I wanted to show you, which, you know, I would imagine a lot of you know, but remember this channel is for people who don't, you know, know that much about trumpets, myself included. So as I come across stuff, I just share it with everybody. But I never realized, like I went on a search for mouthpieces for such a long time, trying to find that airy, breathy kind of tone. And I did find one. One, it's called the Sound Fresh Sound Freak, somewhere in Denmark or somewhere overseas. And they make a mouthpiece. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, here it is. I have a couple of these. So this is what it looks like. I actually had this. This is one of their originals. I, I sent this out to be silver plated because uh, it was untreated brass. So I, I kind of put that in my mouth. I'm like, well, you're not really supposed to put brass directly in your mouth. Anyway. Um, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, can you see the inside of that thing? It's really weird. I mean, it's kind of a, a V shape, but it's literally flat. And for whatever reason, th those ridges and that stuff that's on the inside of that mouthpiece give you that super airy quality without even doing anything. It just happens naturally. And what I also found is, uh, let me grab this mouthpiece real quick too. Hang on. I'm not very well prepared for videos, right? Anyway, this is the uh, Lotus Turbo Wood 3L. The 3L is the size that I seem to really enjoy the most from Lotus, and I really like their stuff. It's, their, their trumpet mouthpieces are outstanding for me. I really, I mean, I like all mouthpieces, but they're really cool. Anyway, I've showed this, shown this before. Excuse me, showed, shown. Oh, look, there's even an L on there. I wonder if that's for large or Lotus or what. Maybe Lotus. Anyway, uh, this comes apart, right? So if you notice, this part's real flat right there. Yeah, that makes sense. Just like that part's real flat right there. So I'm almost wondering if that's what actually does it. But what, Because what I found is that if I take this mouthpiece and instead of cranking it down real tight like that, I leave it loose. Oh, that sound is oh, irritating. Sorry leave it a little bit open like that, this thing becomes super airy. So there's something to the, wow, that's, ah, that noise just killed me. <laughs> but what I really wanted to share with you was not that you need a mouthpiece to do that, that it's actually a technique that you can employ. Maybe some people don't and it's just how they play, but it's definitely a technique you can employ with your embouchure. And that's, seven and a half minutes into this video, what I actually wanted to show you, which will probably take like one minute. So let's take a listen to the, the different uh, tonalities that I can get out of just paying attention to how I'm blowing air into the mouthpiece. Could really pick it up from that but it's it it's really i don't really know how to describe what i'm doing this is one of the things i i kind of have trouble with when i watch these super awesome horn players describe hey Val, how things are happening um i don't know what they're talking about you know it's like uh days of thunder when he's like i just don't have the vocabulary he didn't know how to tell him the car was loose or tighten this or move that he didn't know. So I don't really know what it is that's causing that to happen, but I hope you can hear it on the phone. Like I don't feel like I'm doing, it's not less air, it's not more air, it's some subtlety that I'm doing with the muscles in my face, my embouchure, in my lips, that's causing that. And I, it's a very deliberate thing. Like I got to think about it to, to be able to do it, which is why these other mouthpieces are kind of handy. Because in that regard, like if I put this sound fresh thing in there, it just does it.
right? And if I change it into this again and just play normally. That sounds totally different, but I can sort of emulate that if I really pay attention. It's a lot more dramatic and pronounced and, and frankly a lot easier with a mouthpiece that does it. Let me show you what I mean with this Lotus too though. So if you have a two-piece mouthpiece, there's something to it being pulled apart. Okay, so here's the turbo wood. A little bit more raspy anyway, but let me loosen it up here. Oh, that sound is brutal. <laughs> okay. Forget you don't need to wet your lips for this one. So that's crazy, right? Like that really changed a, a significant amount. And it's only turned out like, I don't know, a quarter or an eighth of a turn. So if you like that kind of sound, you can achieve that by just loosening this. And I don't know that you're supposed to do that or if that's... But, I mean, really, are there any rules? I don't know. I was talking about taping mouthpieces the other day and, you know, putting all this crazy stuff on here. You could do all kinds of stuff. Whatever you want, I guess, works. But I thought that was an interesting tip that you can actually achieve that by loosening up a two-piece or three-piece mouthpiece, just unscrewing a little. I have a couple of uh, Diorios and stuff like that that are modular like this that would be able to do that as well. So kind of an interesting find I thought I'd share.